I'm sorry to make so many videos on this atheism thing, but I'm trying to finish the topic in my head. I'm beginning to get really, really angry now because the whole Darwinian explanation of evolution makes atheism look bad. If you go all the way back to 1744, when this kind of argument was just getting started, because Darwin's part of a larger process. The arguments that Darwin makes and the arguments that were going on before him that he aspires to or ascribes to, some of them, they're all treating nature like a Greek god. And they're just like writing little panegyrics. A panegyric was a Roman praise poem, or it's Greek actually, where you praise something in really flamboyant terms, okay? And you made all kinds of outrageous statements. That was considered um, laudatory, complimentary. Darwin and his group before him were all praising nature the way the ancient Greeks did, as if nature were a god. And what Darwin writes in Origin of the Species and Descent of Man is sheer conjecture, no support whatsoever for what he's saying. He doesn't even define species properly. Okay, and the definition of species was known for hundreds of years to mean the ability for two of the same kind to mate. Appearance was not a definition of species, ever. Darwin just is totally ignorant of all that. And so was everybody in the transmutation crowd that he belonged to. I mean, you can't believe how stupid these people were. They're very, it's a very religious tone in Darwin's writing. That's why I've always been against him. He's just speculating. He, it might as well be science fiction, okay? And I thought, well, okay, you know, that was this Arnold Anglican clergyman with his God, you know, his humanism and his Greek Godism. You know, that's a, 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 a literary tradition, so you can't take him too seriously. What I did know was that now, 150 years later, the discussion has not improved. There is zero, zero evidence for anything Darwin says at all. Zero. You know what they've done instead? This is so dishonest, I can't see straight. That's why I'm making this video. Look, well, let me tell you what's dishonest first, and then I'll, I'll, I'll make the point I want to make. They're just taking appearances, you know, an ape has two arms and two legs, a man has two arms and two legs. Therefore, the man came from the ape. That's all they've ever succeeded in doing in the last 150 years. They just keep asserting it based on appearance. They just keep asserting that the gene magically mutates, adding new parts to itself, like I did in my Bicycles Do Not Become Ferraris video to show you the problem. The so-called Darwinians, Dawkins and all the rest of the crowd, they're talking the same way Darwin did. No! It's just assertion on top of assertion on top of assertion. Everything you guys accuse the Christians of doing is what Dawkins and his crowd are doing. There is no gene evidence at all, zero, nothing, that proves that a gene can mutate the way that they're talking about. Zero. And I already explained that there's no, that it contradicts math, it contradicts physics. But they're not even, they're not even presenting evidence. They're presenting assertion after assertion, and then after they present their assertion, they present their assertion as if it's true. 
Who do you guys accuse us of the most? The Bible is true because the Bible is true, right? Well, that's what they're saying. Evolution, Darwinian version, is true because evolution is true. They never provide. They don't even try to provide any evidence. And they just combine whatever appearance they want and say that that's in the same family as man or the same family as the whale or whatever it is they want. It's totally asserted. There's no scientific evidence of anything to support it at all. There never has been in 150 years since Darwin. That's criminal, I'm sorry. They're making atheism look bad. I mean, Dawkins himself, oh, it's finally intellectually fulfilling to be an atheist because I got Darwinism to hang my head on. After you read Darwin, you're going to not want to associate with them at all. That's why there are links to what Darwin wrote and what the scholarship at the time said in reply in my transmutation video. Darwin is saying that an ape can become a human without any kind of evidence to support it. It's all based on the fact the ape has two arms and two legs and is capable of walking upright. There's nothing else to support it, even now. Now, honey, if you are an atheist, be one. You have an absolute right and even a duty to be an atheist until and unless you have proof God exists. Why should you be anything other than an atheist until you got proof? I'm telling you right now, I'm not a Christian because someone told me to be. Maybe when I was a kid I was, but not now. I needed proof that it's really God there. A book isn't going to prove it to me. Evolution doesn't matter who started it. So who cares about evolution? That proves nothing. That doesn't prove God doesn't exist. And that doesn't prove God exists because God is immaterial and supernatural. So hello, God, if you're really there, I need proof from you directly. Talk to me. Now, an invisible God is not going to, you know, make sounds. How do I? That would be hallucinating. And it's not even apt. No. Prove to me in my head. Send me thoughts that I know I couldn't, I couldn't create. And then do it over and over and over and over and over and over. Give me understanding I couldn't have on my own. Over and over. So I know it's you and not me. So I know it's you and not a hallucination. Honey, if you don't have that kind of proof, you don't have any proof at all. I don't care what you believe. I don't care what you were raised in. Evolution or no evolution of any kind, but... If you're an atheist and you ascribe to Darwinian evolution, you're advertising to the world that you're an idiot. I don't want atheism to be treated as a stupid thing. I'm sorry. I don't think atheism is stupid. I think it's the only sane answer until and unless you got the proof of God I just talked about. Otherwise, you know, you'd be spinning your wheels. There's 90,000 bazillion religions out there, 90,000 bazillion ideas of God, and actually, there's at least 12 different versions of evolution that are far more sane than Darwinianism. Darwinianism is animism. Darwinianism is reincarnation without the God words. Read Darwin yourself. There's absolutely no genetic evidence to support it. Talk about flying spaghetti monster. This is the fantastic speciation monster which has intent, has goals, only does things that are beneficial. Sound like God to you. And then it's called natural selection. And there's nothing natural about it. And it doesn't occur in nature. We can't find it. 150 years have gone by since Darwin. He published in 1859. And there's no evidence of natural selection occurring. Look at all the dumb Christians. Natural selection did not produce them then, did they? Look at Dawkins. He sees somebody that natural selection should have eliminated. Through little tiny changes. 
And when you see the satire that a guy named Robert Mackenzie Berkeley, who wrote in 1867, made out of Darwin's writing, the satire on Darwin's own expressions and how Darwin contradicts himself all the time, you wouldn't want to associate with Darwin. You might as well associate with uh, the, uh, some Christian sect that thinks the moon is really made out of green cheese. That's how much logic there is in Darwin. That's how much lo logic there is in the Dawkins Neo-Darwin version. Actually, Neo-Darwinianism makes even less sense than when Darwin wrote back in 1859. I'm dead serious. You have the right and even the duty to be an atheist until you got direct proof from God in your head. And hello, obviously you can't prove that to anybody else. So what? You only need to prove it to yourself. So atheism is good, okay? It doesn't need some outside crutch that's really religion in disguise and totally unsupportable by science. Claiming to be science. You don't need that. Now there's one other point I need to make. I'm sorry this is such a rant, but I defend atheism. I believe in it. I think it's the duty and the right of every single human being to be an atheist till you yourself got proof of God, period. That's what scientific means. If you don't have proof, you don't believe. Okay? I've, I've, I'm clear, I've cleared you on that. Okay, there's one other thing about Darwinian evolution that makes it the scam that it is and how they get away with it year after year without any real evidence. What they're doing is they're taking the micro side and just asserting that what you see happen in micro evolution is actually happening in macro evolution that you can't see. That's like me telling you that the Bible you can see proves God exists who you can't see. And you guys rightly go back to us Christians and say, uh, hello, how is that proof? It's so contradictory for one thing, and there's so many interpretations for another, and it was written by people for another. How can that be proof of God? Well, it is, but you have to get proof from God how to know it's from God. Well, the same thing is true for evolution. Macro and micro in every single science there is are entirely antithetical systems. So if anything, microevolution would point against macroevolution. Let me give you some examples. In physics, microphysics is quantum mechanics, quantum physics, quantum theory. All of its principles operate the opposite of general and special relativity. Talk to any physicist you want. That's the big problem they're having in cosmology, is they can't figure out. Einstein, before he died, was really frustrated about this. He could not figure out how to unite quantum mechanics, which was just newly being understood then, with his own general theory of relativity and special relativity. There's a problem, of course, with Newton also, because Einstein improved on Newton. Quantum mechanics is exactly the opposite, and that's what's stumping cosmologists and physicists today. It's micro physics, and it operates on entirely different principles that, that seemingly require chaos. And multi dimensions and string theory and all that stuff is all tied in. Go read it, go read the differences. Okay, same thing with micro and macro biology. Very different disciplines, very different processes, and they're antithetical to each other. So microevolution, evolution, which is used by the Darwinians to say, well, see, it's the same process as microevolution happening on a larger scale. Uh, I'm sorry, no other science does think, do things work that way. The large scale is always the opposite of the small scale. Macro and microbiology are entirely different. Okay, they really are. They're entirely different ecosystems, to say the least. Go look that up. Okay, then, as if that weren't enough, you got micro and macro economics, which a lot of you might be more familiar with. 
Microeconomics, you know what that is? That's you and your checkbook going to the store, the interaction between you and that store individually. Macroeconomics is indeed a composite of the whole, but the principles by which macroeconomics works are entirely the opposite of microeconomics. And that's really important because that's why so many governments screw up the economy. Because they're they're operating their macroeconomics, you know, without regard to the differences in microeconomics. Okay? You have to understand the interplay between both to have good federal policy, for example, in the United States. The Democrats have never learned that. They flunk economics 101. See, micro and macro are two opposites. And here's another thing that everybody's going to understand. The birth process versus post-birth process of living. Birth process in man, nine months to fully form a body, and there's no breathing in the womb, therefore there's no life in the womb. Duh. It's like being on life support when you're physically dead. In other words, when you put a patient outside the body on life support, the patient's in a coma, the heart is stopped, the brain is stopped, but there are these machines keeping both of them moving, it's not really alive, it's corpse. The same thing is true in the womb, which the pro-lifers never learn. And frankly, the Bible correctly explains. There's no life in the womb. There's no life until birth, until the fetus breathes on its own. Because then it's independently operating from within itself. So, birth process, there's all this body parts being formed on anything, you know, kangaroo, a rat, chicken inside an egg. That's one process. It's entirely antithetical in many ways to the living process outside the egg or the womb. The, the timing is different, the development is different, the lifestyle is different, the independence is different versus no independence at all. Just moving body parts. And of course death is opposite of life, except that the biological components are all the same. So then what is life? Science doesn't know that. They've been trying to figure it out for centuries. You see what I'm getting at here? If microevolution is argued as being the same as macroevolution, that violates every single science process we know whether it's pre-birth processes versus post-birth, micro versus macroeconomics, micro versus macrobiology, micro versus macrophysics. And of course it's the opposite from math too. Okay? Math is actually the closest thing that you could use if you're talking about sequencing to justify Darwinian evolution, but as I tried to explain in the audio to Bicycles Don't Become Ferraris, there's an audio linked in the video description there. As I tried to explain there, is that number sequencing requires the addition of new information in order for the sequence to occur. But Darwinian version of evolution denies new information external. They're just saying that the gene somehow magically mutates all by itself. Okay, well then obviously Darwin, you know, didn't didn't do that. Darwin didn't say that. He allowed for external influence. So his argument makes more sense. But Dawkins is a complete idiot about genetics. Because any kind of mutation in genetics is always a subtraction, which I explained in the audio to my transmutation video. You know, mutation seems like an addition. Yeah, it's like an addition where a baby suddenly has two heads. Okay, well then the baby's going to be deformed and doesn't live as long. That's a subtraction. No mutation occurs without subtraction. I guess that Dawkins never went to uh, Biology 101 class. Because that's one of the first things you learn about mutation. And in math, it's the same thing as the number missing from a sequence. So Darwinian evolution doesn't work at any level, 
And because it doesn't work, they paper it over by asserting evolution is true because evolution is true. Because the ape looks like the man, therefore evolution is true. That's not logical. It's not supported by evidence. Now, like I said in those other you know, videos, sorry I'm making so many, I would like it if Darwinian evolution were true. It's a cute story, and I love sci-fi, and it's very much in the sci-fi mode. Once upon a time, you know, and we all love the Big Bang, although I'm, I'm wondering about that too. Because Big Bang is something coming from nothing. How is that? Hmm? When did you ever hear of something coming from nothing? You have to buy something coming from nothing to buy Darwinian theory. But then they turn right around and say, well, something never comes from nothing. There's no external. Well, then how can a gene mutate in a profitable natural selection has always been official way? There's no way. It's a scam, guys. And it's a scam that makes atheism look bad. I think atheism is totally respectable. Again, finally saying it one more time. You should be an atheist until you have proof that God exists. And evolution isn't going to give you that proof pro or con. It's all middle data. How did the process even of evolution get here? Oh, I don't know. Flying spaghetti monster made it. Yeah, nature. Natural selection is the fantastic speciation monster. I call it God. What's the difference? You see, the Darwinians are trying to make atheism a religion. Do you want it to be a religion? I don't think so. I don't believe in religion either. Religion sickens me. Religion is sick. But that doesn't mean God is sick. And God doesn't need my worship. He doesn't need me to obey Him. He either exists or He didn't. And if He did, He made me and, Hi God, I need to know you. But I don't want to mess with all this nonsense. Tell me where I should, that you're real. Prove it to me. And then if you wrote some book somewhere, let me know where that book is. So I have independent proof of you from something I can't see. Does that make sense? So if you're an atheist, be an atheist. And if you're an atheist, you don't need a religion like Darwinian evolution to justify your atheism. And if anybody disputes that, send them to me. Peace out.